Thank you for joining us today. My name is Claudette Estherine Campbell and I am the chairperson and president of this foundation. The truthful lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. That's from Proverbs 12, 19. The tongue is one of the smallest organs of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the whole course of our life on fire and is itself set on fire. That says James 3, verses 5 to 6. The evil of the tongue works within and without. It defiles us on the inside and destroys our lives on the outside. It leaves everything scattered. As humans, we continually tame and have successfully tamed animals. The tongue, on the other hand, cannot be tamed. It is wilder, more powerful, and more elusive than any animal in the jungle. Its potential for evil is so great, although our teeth and lips do their best to block it. The tongue is directly connected to the heart, and it is the heart that motivates and manipulates the tongue for good or evil, to bless or to curse. In Matthew 12, 35 to 37, Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things, end quote. quote. But remember, every idle word we speak, we will be called to account for eventually. For by our words, we will be justified, and by our words, we will be condemned. When you go to your doctor, one of the first thing that is examined is your tongue. It tells the doctor a lot about your physical condition. If it is coated, you, are prob you probably have a fever. If it is yellowish, your digestive system may be out of sorts. A doctor can tell a great deal about your physical condition by looking at your tongue. Similarly, through a tongue examination, we learn quite a bit about a person's spiritual condition as well. By examining the tongue of a patient, the physician finds out about the diseases of the body. A philosopher will find out about the diseases of the mind or a psychologist. A spiritualist, we find out the diseases of the soul. A rudder will determine the direction of a ship in spite of its insignificant size in comparison to the ship. Likewise, the tongue will direct the actions and determine the direction of our entire body, despite the fact that it is one of the smaller parts of our body. Our lives are destined to go in some direction. The right word at the right time may open doors to great things that will set the course of our life's work. On the other hand, the wrong words spoken at any time, even at an unsuspecting moment, may close doors, establish a reputation, and mark a destiny for ill. Words can most certainly determine our direction. Psalms 34, 12 to 13 tells us, who is the man who desires life and loves many days so that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. It's only, it's, it's only the spiritually mature that can control their tongue. Most of the time, we find it difficult to control our speech. Words have a way of slipping off the tongue and past our lips before we even know it. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul, says Proverbs 18, verse 7. Proverbs 19, verse 9 tells us, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speak lies shall perish. If we could just muzzle our mouth and tame our tongue, everything else would be simple by comparison. Our verbiage can destroy a family, it can destroy colleagues, it can destroy your church or even a community or even a nation. Those of us with loose lips 
that release all sorts of nonsense spewed by the tongue are oftentimes motivated by issues such as arrogance, jealousy, bitterness, vindictiveness, implacability, hatred, mental adultery, pettiness, envy, guilt, etc. All these issues are focused on other people at one time or another. When someone reaches out to attack another person, the tongue is used to voice the inner mental state that are already present. It's already inside of you. Such conversations can be direct and scathing, even vulgar, or it can be subtle, refined, and intellectual. A lie is something falsely said with the intention of deceiving. To tell a lie is to avoid telling the truth. This is done by saying something untrue outright or by fudging the truth. To lie is to intentionally mislead others when they expect honest communication. Some people tell lies occasionally, but there are those who walk in lies and they tell lies habitually and compulsively. They live under false pretenses. People lie so that others will form beliefs that are not true. People tell lies for many reasons. They lie to avoid embarrassment, to exaggerate their accomplishments, and to disguise wrongdoing. They make promises they have no intention to keep. Many lie to their friends and family members to spare their feelings. Whatever the purpose in telling them, lies can be gross or subtle. Some consist merely of euphemism or tactical silence, but it is in believing one thing while intending to communicate another that every lie is born. Of course, the liar often imagines that she does no harm as long as her lies go undetected, but the one lied to almost never shares this view. The moment we consider our dishonesty from the point of view of those we lie to, we recognize that we would feel betrayed if the roles were reversed. One of the greatest problems for a liar is that she must keep track of her lies. Some people are better at this than others. Lies beget other lies. It must be continually protected from collisions with the truth. When you tell the truth, you have nothing to keep track of. The world itself becomes your memory. And if questions arise, you can always point others back to it. You can even reconsider certain facts and honestly change your views. And you can openly discuss your confusion, conflicts, and doubts with all who come. In this way, a commitment to the truth is naturally purifying of error. But the liar must remember what she said and to whom and must take care to maintain her falsehoods in the future. This can require an extraordinary amount of work, all of which comes at the expense of authentic communication. The liar must weigh each disclosure, whatever the source, to see whether it might damage the facade that she has built. Whether or not anyone discovers that she has been lying, all these stresses accumulate. Lying is stressful. All types of lies are simply not telling the truth. Whether you are merely exaggerating, you're bearing false witness against another, you're dissimulating or faking, you're telling a white lie, you're boasting, you're a bold-faced liar, you're fabricating, or you're committing outright fraud. These are but some examples of the types of lies, types and ways we engage in lying. As I close this morning, let me offer you a way to guard your heart and check your lying tongue. Begin to love what is true just for being true. Let me say that again. Begin to love what is true just for being true. For those who claim to believe the Bible and chew the leaves of the Bible, but continually lie, the most important reason God or source despises a lying tongue is that God is truth. Speak the truth in love 
If we do that, it won't be hate. It won't be hurt and it won't be ruined. It will be a blessing. Speak the truth in love and keep your promises, even if it hurts, Psalms 15. Your life will be unshakable where it counts. In Proverbs 13, 5, it tells us, a good man hates lies. Wicked men lie constantly and come to shame. Proverbs 19, verse 9, states clearly, a false witness will not go unpunished. Life, source, the universe loves the mouths of truth, but hates the tongues of lies. Always stand for truth and always tell the truth because lying lips are an abomination, but truthful dealing is God's delight. Thank you for watching and have a blessed and truth-filled Sunday.